From WNYT, Albany, this is News Channel 13, live at 11. Tonight's top story, Matthew Wilson free now after being acquitted in one of the region's most sensational murder cases in years. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Monarson. The verdict stunned everybody in the courtroom, stunned Wilson, too. Only his mother was able to say afterward that she expected it. Wilson had been accused, along with another youth, of killing a man named Dennis Jerome, stabbing him a total of 351 times. Bill Lambton was in the courtroom. I feel surprised. I feel surprised. That's all 17-year-old Matthew Wilson could say before dissolving into tears. He then walked out of Saratoga County Court with his mother, free of police custody for the first time in 20 months. In July 1992, state worker Dennis Jerome was found dead in his vicious ferry home, stabbed 351 times. Wilson and another 16-year-old, Matthew Gaspera, were arrested. Authorities charged that the two Malta teens went to the 41-year-old man's house for money and sex that turned into murder. But in court, Wilson's attorney, Mark Harris, argued the teens killed in self-defense to prevent Jerome from continuing painful and illegal sodomy with Gaspera. Murder, second. Not guilty. Oh. So say you all? Yes. 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 There's utter disbelief that he got off with it. The verdict shocked the dead man's family, Brother Bruce Jerome. God knows everything, and he's got it down on record. And uh, we'll see what happens in the end. Matthew Wilson's mother, Deborah, was in tears. I knew my son didn't want to kill that man. And I know my son didn't. And I know my son didn't want anything to happen. He, he's a very kind person. Later, the Wilsons and their attorney called a news conference to complain that the authorities had misjudged the situation when they accused Matthew. Why did the young man stab Jerome three times? Why did he stab Jerome three times? At the time that that took place was long after Jerome was dead, when a decision had been made by two boys totally freaked out with the situation to cover up and stop that activity once he got thinking about what the, the, that was all about. The jury left without saying anything about their deliberations. That is their right, but not a requirement. A separate jury will now consider the case against the other teen involved, Matthew Gaspera. Bill Lambden, News Channel 13, Boston Spa. Thank you, Bill. A pretty serious house fire in Albany right now. It broke out a little after 10 o'clock in, uh, in a building housing some apartments on Clinton between 2nd and 3rd. It is so smoky that all over the South End, people are calling the fire department, calling 911 to report something burning. The fire department reporting that it's being overwhelmed. At least one person reported injured a firefighter with burns. He has been taken by ambulance to Albany Med. Part of the building has collapsed, and firefighters are saying they're worried about the fire spreading to neighboring buildings. Also, a house fire in Greene County tonight in an area that has been hit time and again in recent months by an arsonist. Tonight's fire in the town of Durham along the Susquehanna Turnpike. No injuries and no word yet on the cause. The arsonist has never been caught. He has been blamed, however, for more than a dozen fires in that part of Greene County in just the past seven months. Nothing yet on the cause either of a smoky fire this afternoon at the Bel Air Motel on Route 9 in Skodak. Damage confined mostly to a restaurant and to the motel office. Nobody seriously hurt here, although one firefighter was treated at the scene for smoke inhalation. The roof fell to end today at a boat dealership in Glenville, Scotia Marine. Apparently too much snow on the roof. The collapse severed a gas main, and as a precaution, about a dozen employees were evacuated from the Glenville Soda and Beverage Company next door. But there was no fire, and in the end, despite the damage, nobody was hurt. A lot of people around Rochester talking tonight about the earthquake. It was just a small one, nothing like what California normally sees, only about 3.6 on the Richter scale. It was centered near the village of Kylersville, about 35 miles south of Rochester. No damage, no injuries, but some inconvenience. A salt mine in the area canceled work today while the shaft was checked for structural soundness. With all the drums and high stepping, it may have felt a little quake in Albany this afternoon. It wasn't. It was the city's 43rd annual St. Patrick's Parade. St. Patrick's Day, of course, not until Thursday. The parade held today just because it's the weekend beforehand, and it seemed like a good idea. Several thousand gathered. 
Troy held its St. Patrick's Parade as well today. Many of the same pictures there. Wide-eyed kids, bagpipers, majorettes. Congressman Mike McNulty, the honorary Grand Marshal in Troy. Incidentally, the organizers of Boston's big St. Patrick's Parade did the unthinkable today. They canceled to protest a judge's ruling ordering that gays and lesbians be allowed to march. Now it's time for a first look at the weather with uh, Paul Cayano, and things are looking pretty good out there. No protest over our forecast. No, tonight. definitely not. We had a nice day today, and uh, we'll continue the dry weather through the most part of tomorrow. However, it will be cloudy outside as we take a first look. Sunrise 11, 6, 11, excuse me, a.m. 7 to 8 a.m., there go the clouds, 27 degrees, continuing the clouds through noontime, 38. A little bit of light rain and snow late in the day, and more light snow tomorrow night. Maybe a dusting to uh, an inch or two accumulation overnight tomorrow night, but uh, not a big deal, not one of those big snowstorms. Shouldn't that, have to uh, shovel. We're used to this time of the year. I'm sorry? So shouldn't have to shovel. No, definitely no shoveling. Maybe just to whisk it away. Whisk it away. I whisk like it the away. sound of that. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> so ahead, First Lady Hillary Clinton finally talking about whitewater. More U.S. troops headed home from Somalia, including some from Fort Drum. And round two of the hockey face-off between Union and RPI. We'll have highlights for you back in a moment. Live, local, late-breaking. With Pat Menarsen, meteorologist Paul Cayano, and Mark Mulholland on sports. This is News Channel 13. Live at 11. News Channel 13 is sponsored in part by Albany Dodge, a member of the Smart Deal Network, and by Tax Auto Body. First Lady Hillary Clinton finally talking, at least in print, about the Whitewater scandal. She is quoted in interviews appearing in next week's editions of both Time and Newsweek as saying that she has made mistakes in the affair. The biggest, she says, was making the original investment in Arkansas that gave birth to the controversy. She says she also underestimated how others might view the controversy, especially reporters. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General John Chalikashvili, said in Somalia today that the last GIs there will be coming home a week early on March 25th. The general in Somalia to say thanks to the soldiers still there. More on that from NBC's Ed Regal. General Chalikashvili came here to make sure the U.S. withdrawal is being carried out as planned. Fewer than 3,000 U.S. troops are here out of a force that once totaled more than 25,000. And the pace of the pullout is accelerating, so the last United States troops will be out of here by March 25th, a week ahead of President Clinton's deadline to end the U.S. presence in Somalia. The tragedy is that we haven't made as much of the interim, of the breathing space that we were given by the initial intervention. Still, food, medicine, life-giving aid is getting through now. The aid channels are open. The famine is over. When American troops first arrived in Somalia 15 months ago, 3,000 people were starving to death each day. Alongside thousands of other UN peacekeepers, American troops guaranteed the food would get through. Then the mission changed. The UN ordered the arrest of General Mohammed Farah Idid. 30 U.S. troops died in action. 175 were wounded. Gunmen killed 18 Americans in a single battle, dragged an American body through the streets, a horrific scene that led to the U.S. decision to get out of Somalia. But now the mission has reverted to guaranteeing delivery of humanitarian aid, mostly medical supplies these days, but this time with enough muscle, about 20,000 UN troops from more than a dozen countries remaining here after the U.S. departs. Somalia is beginning to become a nation again, with police and courts and commercial activity instead of chaos in the streets. What is more, recent secret contacts between Idid and the UN lead the UN to predict a political settlement between rival clans is possible, but no one will say how soon. Ed Rabel, NBC News, Mogadishu. Incidentally, the last big group of U.S. troops in Somalia from Fort Drum should be home in another few hours. They were supposed to be back this afternoon, but there was a flight glitch in Ireland, and so now they're late. The White House is calling it a big victory for everybody concerned. The Japanese finally capitulating today after much pressure from Washington and agreeing to let U.S.-based Motorola enter the Japanese cellular phone market. The issue had become symbolic of the long-running trade dispute between Washington and Tokyo. The development could mean thousands of jobs at Motorola and millions in profit. Still ahead, a forecast that is a victory for all of us. For once, it doesn't have a big snowstorm in it. 
Okayano next to tell us all about that. Weather on News Channel 13 is sponsored by your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Paul here now to tell us what he means by saying that we'll be whisking tomorrow night's snow away rather than shoveling it. Well, the dusting to a couple of inches, it sure beats what we had this time last I year. About we had the blizzard bearing yeah. down on us this time last year. Let's take a look at what's going on outside right now at the Albany County Airport. We have a temperature of 30 degrees under cloudy skies. Today's high 40, normal 42, record high 67, 12 below was the record low. We have a south wind at 5, 70 percent relative humidity, the barometer is falling. The top five March snowstorms, one, remember this one, probably not, 1888, March 11th through 14th, 46.8 inches of snow. Not many of us remember that one, but uh, it was the biggest one in March, and you can see most of them have occurred around this time, so we're escaping with maybe just a, an inch or two tomorrow night, so we can consider ourselves lucky. Right now throughout the region, temperatures are in the 30s, we're watching clouds increase from west to east. And we'll have a general increase in clouds overnight tonight and during the day tomorrow. I believe the precipitation will hold off until tomorrow evening when we will see some light snow begin to fall. Clear skies 24 hours ago over the eastern third of the country. But we'll watch the clouds move in from the Great Lakes during the day today into the Niagara frontier. And they will move into central New York this evening and continue to move our way during the night tonight. We're also watching another clipper coming down from Alberta, and that will cross our area come Tuesday, and we could expect some more light snow then. Another storm system down here into Texas providing a lot of snow for the mountains of New Mexico and western highlands of Texas, and that will uh, not be affecting us anytime soon. High pressure moving off the coast, low pressure moving its way in. We'll be in and out of here tomorrow night with maybe a dusting to two inches of snow at the most. We'll take a look at the radar. We can see that we have a few light snow showers now up by Watertown and Messina scattering back towards Chicago area and Peoria, Illinois. What we're going to see is the front pass tomorrow. Some light snow as the cold front passes through. A bit cooler tomorrow night on into Monday when we will see temperatures in the 40s. And the front will pass off. We'll have clearing skies, but then we begin to turn our attention towards the next system, which will approach us from the Great Lakes. It'll be another Alberta clipper. A quick one, light snow, another shot of cold air, maybe a dusting to another couple of inches. I'll have the complete details and the forecast in 30 seconds. My forecast looks like this, 23 to 28 degrees, increasing clouds overnight, 40 to 45 tomorrow. Light snow developing late, could be some rain to the south. And then tomorrow night, more light snow, dusting into two inches total in the next four days. Tuesday, a little more light snow, but look at these temperatures, Pat, in the 30s and lower 40s. So we're looking good uh, leading up to the first week of spring. We'll make it to spring. Yes, we will. At long last. Thanks, Paul. Well, it has to be a hair-raising experience for the dogs this weekend in Schenectady. It's a cat show, and the funny thing about it is, all the cats are putting on the dog. News Channel 13's Elaine Houston. Playing around is just part of the job at the New England Siamese Alliance Cat Show, where everybody wants to be the top dog. Sorry, top cat. Well, every breed has its own standard, and you judge each cat by how well it conforms to that standard. But there are no standard or run-of-the-mill felines here. Rather, more than 300 pure and a few mixed breeds. And talk about stiff competition. His name is Evan Hills Androscoggin of May Coons. Grand champion. We call him Andy. This is Misty from Boston. You, you close the door to get her mentally prepped. <laughs> I don't think she has to get psyched up or anything, but uh, no, she likes to sleep in there. It's quieter. But when it comes to traveling in style, Misty's got nothing over Tutu from Jersey, who takes her bed, mirror, and fish bowl on the road with her. There are people that spend in their campaigns $20,000, $30,000 to campaign a cat throughout the show year to get that national award. Elaine Houston, News Channel 13 in Schenectady. The winners will be picked tomorrow. Still ahead, Mark Mulholland with sports and two David and Goliath clashes here today. One on the basketball court and the other pitting RPI and Union against one another on the ice. Back with that straight ahead. It's the New York Lotto Drawing. Observed by an auditor from Coopers and Lybrand. Good evening and welcome to the Lotto Drawing for Saturday, March 12, 1994. Tonight you could win a share of jackpot of $4,500,000. Now for tonight's lotto numbers. The first winning number 
is 18. Tonight's second winning number is 32. Our third winning number is 31. Tonight's fourth winning number is 27. The fifth winning number for tonight is six. And the sixth winning number to win a share over $4 million is nine. The supplementary number for fourth prize only is 28. Tonight's winning lotto numbers are 18, 32, 31, 27, six, nine, and supplementary number 28. For the New York Lottery and Yolanda Vega, thank you and good night. Well, there goes another fortune. Just like that, out the window. Yeah, did you play? <laughs> yeah. You gotta be in it to win Unusual. it. Unusual. You know that. Gotta be in it what? You gotta be in it to win it. That's what I've heard. Yeah. University at Albany was in it tonight. Uh, did they win it? We'll find out. The University at Albany played host to New York University. The winner gets a trip to the Division Three Final Four and another jam-packed house at the rack tonight. Just over a minute left of the game. This bucket by NYU's Jonathan Gabriel puts them up by seven. But for the second straight night, the Danes come back. This long three-pointer by Jason Graber cut the visitors' lead to two. Graber led all scorers with 21 points. Still a two-point game. NYU at the line now. The miss at Albany would get one last shot for the win. Gary Murray shot up, but it won't fall. 67-65, the final. Albany finishes the season at 25-3. Congrats to Doc Sowers on his best season ever. College hockey now, RPI and Union. The Dutchman upset the Engineers last night in game one of this best of three ECAC playoff. Early first period tonight at the playoffs, at the Fieldhouse, rather. Jeff Gabriel to Eric Ferrari. Bang, bang, play up the scoring. Second period now, the Engineers increase their lead. Xavier Magic with the power play goal to put RPI up 2-0. Later in the second, Craig Hamlin with this power play goal. His first of two on the night. RPI evens the series with the 5-1 win over Union. Game three tomorrow night at the Fieldhouse. Back to the courts now. Albany High face Section 3's West Genesee tonight in the Class A Regional Finals. Good crowd on hand at Hudson Valley tonight. West Genesee was led by this guy, Jeff O'Connor. O'Connor tossed in 27 points and hauled down nine rebounds. West Genesee led by eight at the half. Albany would erase that lead thanks to strong second half play from number 32, Dante Ivey. Ivy had 14. Albany standout Devin Airdes pumped in 18, but he fouled out of this ball game. Davin Johnson helped out with 14, but West Genesee ends Albany high season 70 to 60, 70 to 64 is the final score. Other boys basketball action, regional play today, Class B. Bishop Gibbons lost by four to Central Square. Elsewhere, Class C, Saranac Lake beat Greenwich in overtime. And in Class D, Waterford lost to Herman DeKalb by 11. Class B girls regional action at Hudson Valley. Burnt Hills facing Corcoran, the second-ranked Class B team in the state. The Lady Spartans led by the Micklick sisters, and we have tape of this ball game. Let's go to that. Uh, Burnt Hills and Corcoran in the Class B regionals today. Number 31, Melanda, Melanda Micklick was high scorer with 14 points, while her sister Jen, number two here, chipped in 11. Burnt Hills advances with a 15-point win over Corcoran. The girls' regional scoreboard now Class A. Columbia and West Genesee. No report in there. Greenwich over Saranac. 77 to 25, Class D, St. Johnsville by 59. Yes, 59 over Crown Point. By the way, Crown Point led 6 to 5 at one point in that ballgame. Karen Schaff becomes the second all-time leading scorer in Section 2 history with 23 points. College hoops now, conference tourney time. Second-ranked UConn facing Providence in the semifinals of the Big East tourney. The Friars had won six straight going in. Robert Phelps had the hot hand for Providence today. He gets the bucket and the foul. The Huskies led by a point at the break. Second half, this goes down to the wire. Ray Allen buries the three here to cut the Providence lead to one. But Phelps hits some key buckets, including a jump shot down the stretch to put Providence up by three. The Friars knock off the top-seeded Huskies. 69-67, Providence will play Georgetown for the Big East Championship. In the SEC, top-ranked Arkansas facing number 10, Kentucky. And Kentucky starts strong in this ballgame. Jared Prickett in the paint, surrounded by Razorbacks. He scores. But Kentucky goes to their go-to guy. Tony Delk would get it done from the outside with the three. And later, the inside. 10th-ranked Kentucky knocks off Arkansas 90-78. to The top 25 board now. Welcome to Upset City. Nebraska knocked off third-ranked Missouri by seven. Number four, North Carolina nips Wake Forest in OT. Virginia upset Duke by five. Northwestern upset the Wolverines by four. Arizona State knocked off seventh-ranked Arizona. Oklahoma State surprised number 11, Kansas. And Florida by 16 over Alabama. 
Pro Hoops now. The Knicks carried a five-game win streak into tonight's game against Cleveland. New York looked good again tonight. Derek Harper with the steal. He'll bring it in for the lay-in. The Knicks spreading the scoring around tonight. Hubert Davis playing well. John Starks injured. Davis for three. It falls. Charles Oakley playing his usual solid game on the boards. He had the double-double tonight. The Knicks win their sixth straight over the Cavs. Ewing had 29. The NBA board now. The Nets by 25 over the Hornets. The Hawks beat the Pistons by 12. The Pacers down the Bucks. Sacramento loses to the Bulls and the Spurs and Rockets. San Antonio wins it 109-98. AHL hockey action tonight. Adirondack beat Providence 6-3. Brett Harkins had two goals for the Wings. The River Rats over Binghamton. Jim Dowd and Bill Armstrong each with two goals and two assists tonight for the Albany River Rats. And Pat, that'll do it, except to tell you that uh, the Rangers and Pens played today and the Pens over the Rangers 6-2. Mario Lemieux had two goals, two assists, four points. First time he's had four points in ten months. He's back. Good for him. Right. We'll be right back after this. Don't go away. An update now on a fire we told you about a few moments ago in the south end of Albany on Clinton Street between 2nd and 3rd. These are Lake Pictures just back from it. You can see that uh, the uh, fire lit up the skyline in the south end. The blaze producing an awful lot of smoke, so much so that the fire department reports people calling from all over the neighborhood to report something burning. The fire department reporting that it was being overwhelmed. Part of the building collapsed, and we're told that a resident now, rather than a firefighter, a resident apparently was caught inside, has been rushed to Albany Med with third-degree burns. No word yet on his condition. Firefighters still on the scene. Time now to tell you about some of the stories that will be making news in the Times Union tomorrow. There will be a story on the estate of an Albany woman being handled by State Assemblyman Arnold Proskin. The paper reporting that Proskin uh, drew up the will, and he's now the executor, that his children are among the principal beneficiaries. There will also be a story on what uh, are expected to be the best job opportunities in our area next year. And the paper will report on the potential for spring flooding this year along the Mohawk, Apparently, the chances for it are good, and officials are planning for the worst. For once, the worst missing from the weather forecast. Paul Cayano here now to recap that for us. Paul? Okay, what we're going to start off tomorrow with is uh, cloudy skies. Chance of snow late in the day could be mixed with rain to the south of Albany. And then the next four days shows clearing on Monday, Tuesday, a little bit more light snow. Wednesday and Thursday, back to the sunshine with temperatures around 40 degrees, Pat. Thanks, Paul. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, late news for the Saturday. Saturday Night Live next. Thanks for joining us. Good night, everybody. <laughs>